Hello, everybody. Once again, this is your girl Belinda here, and I am interviewing my friend Livia. And uh, Livia and I are going to talk today about her relationship with food and how she was able to overcome that and to uh, bring her where she is right now, currently in her health journey. So, Livia, what's up? First of all, I'd like to thank you for okay. saying yes to my invitation. Um, <laughs> that was really nice of you. So, thank you very much. Um, so, Livia, tell us a little bit about yourself to start off. Okay. Oh my gosh. About myself. What do you want to know? <laughs> um, uh, let me see. I'm from Boston. Hey, I'm from in Boston. Hey. Um, originally from Martinique, but I've been in Boston pretty much all my life. Um, I am graduated college a while ago, I guess you could say. And I am now a working professional and no kids, not married yet. I don't know what else you want to know. <laughs> that's good. That's fair enough. I mean, that's that's good. Actually, that's a very good um, introduction because the last few ladies that I've interviewed are all married with children. So oh. it's kind of nice to know. Um, it's kind of nice to interview you um, um, just to see the differences or and or similarities between, yeah. um, be you know, amongst so far amongst other people that we've been chatting with um yeah. because the journey is going to be different for each 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 person so but it's nice to hear the differences between your journey and theirs so um but thank you so much so that's good so as we know that she's single no children so that's good that gives us kind of like a basis of how you were able to get to where you are so mm -hmm. to start off with so i've known you for quite a bit and i know that you've been um on an up and down journey with health, right? So what can you say made you really start or where were you that made you realize, you know what, I need to do something different? Oh my gosh. So I realized that, I think my relationship with food is where I want to start. I realized right. that I was pretty much eating whatever I want, whenever I want, whatever time that I wanted to eat it. It wasn't really, I wasn't, um, not a conscious eater at all. I ate anything that that tasted good. I would like it. I would eat it. Um, I wasn't a big water drinker. I love soda. Soda was like my go-to. If I didn't have soda today, it wasn't a good day. Okay. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so that's where I noticed that something had to change because I just realized that as I continued eating this way, the weight just kept packing on, packing on, packing on. I knew nothing about exercising, so I wasn't doing that. So when you, when I, when I was just eating whenever I want, however I want and not exercising, that just became a horrible thing. <laughs> okay. All right. And now what, how, what, if you don't mind sharing, what was your heaviest? Um... Oh yes. My heaviest was senior year high school, right before I went to college, I was okay. 265. 265. Okay. 265. All right. And how did you feel? You know what? I didn't feel uncomfortable. I didn't feel uncomfortable. Okay. I, um, throughout my high school, I didn't feel uncomfortable. Um, even when I was teased about my weight in school, I it didn't make me uncomfortable. Like I didn't see it really? as, a, yeah, I didn't see it as a problem at all. I would just defend myself when I did get teased, but it wasn't like something that, nothing was triggered in my mind that made me feel like, oh, maybe I should do something about this. Or like, okay. it didn't lower my self-esteem at all. I was just like, you know, I like to eat. Like, whatever. Man, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it wasn't, um, it was until I got to college, I started being, I guess as you grow up, you know, you just become more self-conscious as a woman, you know, you obviously you want to attract men and you want to just look good with your friends and you want to just, you know, um, you just want to look good. You want to feel good. So I started being a little bit more self-conscious when I got to college. Okay. So yeah. well, I, I remember when we were talking prior to you, you had mentioned how your eating pat pattern was forced to change where you were in school, where, where, yeah. where we were in school. So tell us a little bit about that. So I went to a private school, um, Christian private school and I, um, SBA private school. And I, they didn't have meat on campus. So I was forced to be a vegetarian, I guess you could say. Yep. Of course, I could always get food like off campus, but um, I didn't have a car. So I would have to borrow someone's car or ask someone to bring me to get chicken or whatever. So I just did a lot of days and even weeks just without eating meat. And um, I started noticing a bit of a weight loss with that. Um, 
didn't really think it was because of the meat at first. And then I started noticing like, wait, I'm not doing anything else. It must be me not eating meat. And I think that was kind of like a motivate a motivation for like a motivator for me. It's like, oh, maybe I could keep maybe I could keep doing this, you know? Right, right. Yeah. So and then you didn't have soda either, too, right? So right. Like, so between the soda and the no meat. Okay. No. So um did you were you consistent with that like at first? Like when you realized that correlation where you're like, okay, yeah, this is I'm gonna do it forever and this is it. Like, um no, I still didn't. <laughs> I mean, I it's still, okay. I still I was, ate meat when I went home. No, I still ate meat when I went home. I was not, I did not become a vegetarian until after college, actually, um, where I decided that, you know what, um, meat kind of, I just noticed my body felt better when I didn't eat meat. So I just made that conscious choice on my own um, without being forced like I was in college. I, um, just continued eating meat while I was in college. I still ate whatever I want. I still ate at midnight, 1 a.m. Um, that didn't start changing until I started noticing the weight loss and being curious about, oh, what else can I do to lose weight? You know, I started Googling and I learned a lot about like the, all these different diets that people were doing and healthy living and healthy lifestyle and how to choose you know, better carbs and better food, how much water I should be drinking per day, which I knew nothing about. Like, mm. who knew that drinking a lot of water during the day is actually good for your body? I'm like, what? Soda? I can't drink soda? Juice, isn't, <laughs> juice doesn't help my body? <laughs> so it was, it was a lot of learning, um, for sure. It was a lot of learning, for sure. You know, it's interesting that you say that because we all assume that at least I know in my own experience, I assume that people know you should drink water. Like, you know, like I assume, and I assume people know that no. soda's not bad. Or you, you, you know, you assume, and I don't know if as a healthcare provider, you know what I mean? Like as a nurse or whatever, if that assumption is kind of like built in or if that has something to do with my upbringing. Cause I know like my mom was really strict about nutrition and eating mm. and she still is mm. to this day. So like in my mind, it's just like, what do you mean? You, like when you're saying, like, it kind of still blows my mind that you're like, I didn't know like drinking water was a thing. And I'm just like, how can, how can we not know? You know what I mean? Like, and, and it's not like in a condescending way. It's just interesting to see that, like how sometimes yeah. information, the information is not as, um, what do I want to say? It's not like as, it's not as appreciated no, or just, as, yeah. known as, you know, we think it is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know if for whatever and reason, and you said a, a great point, what you, what you just said there. I realized that how you grew up as a child makes a huge impact on how you eat, what you eat, you know, just like making healthy choices. My parents knew nothing about that. I would mm. eat rice at dinner. I eat rice at midnight. I'll drink so Like, they just weren't health conscious like that so well, of okay. course they couldn't pass that on to me if they didn't Absolutely. know how to be you know what i'm saying so i and i realized that with other people too i made a weird i'm like very observant right so i'm just like i make like weird, i just make weird observations i have realized that i've i've noticed a lot of parents that are overweight and um struggle with knowing how to make healthy choices their children are also overweight and yes. have difficulty making healthy choices that is yes. what i've noticed um not saying it's everybody but i have noticed a lot of like i will literally go to the market and i will see like an overweight mother who's like putting all this stuff in her carriage and i see her children who are also overweight and it's like it almost just makes sense it, it just makes sense. right you know, right. it's just, you, it's something you really, of course, school can teach you this, of course, but it's mostly about what you're learning at home. Like that plays Absolutely. a huge role in your decision making when it comes to food. Yeah. That, that you said a real true thing. Cause I mean, it does start at home. Cause I mean, if again, you can learn it on your own, but it's most likely when you're older, but you're going to, you're going to take on your parents' um, eating habits, as well as a lot of other habits when you're a yeah. child, because that's yeah. your only example at the moment. So mm -hmm. it's yeah. right. Which is, I, I often tell my clients, like, I know, like, there are a couple of people who, when they, when they are trying to change their diet, they only change theirs. And I'm just like, if you are struggling with this right now, 
chances are like if you're struggling with hypertension, diabetes, overweight, obesity right now, chances are your children are going to suffer the same thing if you Absolutely. don't start teaching, yeah. them, teaching them from now to change their eating habits. You know what I mean? Because it's not going to like, oh, wake up magically and it like disappears. It's just like wow. something that will change with time and with like the, you know, with the process. So it's like as parents, as we're changing our eating habits, we have to bring our children along with us in on that journey as well. So, um, but I mean, you, so what you said is very, is, is very key. Um, so would you say, so obviously you got those eating patterns from home. You were eating at any time, drinking soda and all that stuff either. Yeah. Okay. So like when when did you decide all right this is it I'm going to really be consistent with this I'm going to do it I'm going to change it and how long did it take for you to get into like a real groove because I know it's not like you know it's not like rainbows and sunshine and mountain peaks the whole time so how long did it take for you to like really get into like a groove of things Well I think um okay it's going to sound I don't know if you're going to understand what I'm going to say it's going to sound kind of weird okay. Let's I try it. didn't know that I didn't feel good in my body until I started feeling good in my body. That makes all the sense does in that, the world. Does that, yes. does that make sense? Yes, so that makes I, sense. I was this really overweight person, but it didn't bother me. But then I started losing weight and I'm like, oh my gosh, this feeling of feeling good, I've never felt before. Like it was totally different than how I felt when I was 265. So that feeling was just something that I wanted to continue to feel. I'm like, I want to feel good when I go to the store and I try on dresses and I try on whatever I want to try on. Like, I want to look and I want to feel good in that. And I think that was really something that kept me on my game in the beginning, for sure. Like, it was like, this is what I want to, I want to feel like. I deserve to feel good about what I wear, how I look in pictures and how I feel walking around. Like, I just, I deserve to feel good. And I that has been my motivation to continue to keep on um, learning more about foods that are good for me. And I got into working out. I knew nothing about working out. I'm like, go to the gym and what am I supposed to be doing? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, these machines, I'm like, what am I, do I just walk on this thing? Like, what do I, I do? <laughs> what, um, buttons, what do I do? What do I lift up? What do I say? I don't know what to do. Listen, all I understood was start and stop. Like, that's it. <laughs> literally, literally. So I started just YouTubing. I'm just a big researcher and I'm that type of person. I, I always like to research and just, like, I love learning new things and just understanding things. So I just started really Googling um, and YouTubing. Um, there's a lot of people on YouTube that are just there who are already in this journey, who've been in this journey for years. Um, and they're just so knowledgeable with just how to eat and even what exercises to do. So I just started like getting a few, uh, ideas and pointers from some of these people and I'm like, Oh, I'll try walking on the treadmill for a week. I'm like, that's no big deal. I'll do that. You know? And I just started seeing like the weight fall off. I was like, Oh, this is. This is not that bad. And then I started feeling really good after a workout. I realized that I enjoy working out. So it wasn't something that I was even doing anymore to lose weight. It was more like I enjoy working out. I love doing it. Um, I love being challenged. I love pushing my body to a limit, you know? So it just, just became like this lifestyle without even me planning on making it a lifestyle, you know? That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, what do you say is your favorite workout? Like, what do you enjoy doing? And did you have to find, figure it out? Or did you just kind of like, knew this is it? This is what I like. <laughs> um, my favorite kind of working out is... Um, not working out at the gym is like okay so i have been um at gyms where they don't have machines and what you're pretty much using is your body weight you're yep. using weights you're using battle ropes you're yep. uh it's almost like um crossfit yes <laughs> it's almost like crossfit um i it's, you know it's a little bit different but it's basically like crossfit yep. i just fell totally in love i did crossfit for like uh, eight weeks and I totally like fell in love with it. I felt like it was, um, for me as a beginner, maybe it was too much. I think I should have like been more into working out before I joined CrossFit, but I love that type of working out. Yeah. It, it just it just kept you on your toes. It just, right. you know, it was just, it wasn't boring, you know? I think right. people at the gym can just be boring and repetitive, so. 
it feels less like a workout too because you feel like you're doing things like you're lifting tires wow. and, like, <laughs> totally and I was like this is, I could get down with this you know what right. I mean because it's like stuff that's like out of the ordinary but then you still feel like you're using your entire body oh my goodness so yeah. um that's cool so you like that one did have you have you tried anything else besides um crossfit that you like kind of like to do from time to time or do you just prefer to stick to those type of exercises like the crossfit nope. style? i mean i've done like spin classes i've done zumba i was a huge fan of zumba like i was that girl in the front of the class like <laughs> i love the song get to the back <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I need all the room, guys. I need all the my room. space because I know this song by heart. <laughs> like I was that. I I did not miss a Zumba class at all. Like I was all yeah. about Zumba. Um, yeah, but I, I just I need to get back. Now that you mention it, I that I mentioned it, I need to go back into Zumba. <laughs> now that I, I, actually, I actually miss Zumba. You're welcome. Yeah. Huh? You're welcome. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, uh, a Zumba so workout is always a good workout. Hmm. A Zumba workout is always a good workout. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, so I and then I strayed away from classes. I went back to like CrossFit type of workouts um, with different type of gyms or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I stuck with. I try to do like you know uh, little five k races when I can. You know um, those type of. I, I just like to be challenged in some type of way. So okay. I try to. Do, uh, things that challenge me physically when I can. Okay. So, and then yeah. you, you, it sounds like you kind of like do, uh, you, you kind of like jump around. So for, you'll do like CrossFit style type things and uh -huh. then you'll jump to like class training type things, uh -huh. a little bit of cycling and then kind of, kind of rotate, those, which just, is good. Gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is good. Cause variety is like awesome and your muscles don't get bored and tired. So tell me, how about COVID? During COVID, what did you do or did you do anything? Because COVID Girl. definitely presented a challenge. <laughs> Listen, like COVID is out here trying to ruin lives, literally. Listen. I mean, physically, mentally, emotionally, all of that. And I think yeah. a lot of us have taken such a huge hit physically. Yeah. Like I... I feel like everybody has gained some kind of COVID-19, like the pounds, like 19 pounds. Everyone has gained 19 pounds from COVID-19. Yeah. <laughs> COVID-19 pounds, yep. Like no lie. I've just realized that a lot of people, because the gyms have been closed, and not just that, but you're not able to be out and about like you used to anymore. People will probably be out and about more, walking more. I feel like people are more... People don't want to go out with a mask. Like, who wants to walk around with a mask all day? Like, people just end up staying home, working from home. A lot of people are just sitting, doing, not doing much physically. So, it has been, it has been something. So, not going to the gym for me has been hard. I have been doing home workouts, but then that got really boring really fast. Uh, so, I have been just YouTubing a bunch of stuff that I try to find interesting. But there's something about being at the gym and just working out at the gym with different types of equipment that just motivate you. Right. Um, we were just working with like, I don't have a gym in my house. Like, I just have weights. I have a dumbbell. I have, I mean, um, I have a, what do you call that? A kettlebell. Resistance bands. Resistance bands I have. I have um, like a very heavy, heavy weighted rope, jump rope that I have, which I love nice. doing. But you know, over over what six months it's been with COVID. Like over time, that stuff gets boring. You know, it's like it's the gym. I need to do something different. You know, so it's been it's been hard. I've gained a good solid like six pounds with COVID. So <laughs> I mean, it's whatever. <laughs> hey, you know what? You do what you can, right? Yeah, you have you can. tried Have you tried exercising outside? You know what? I haven't. Um, I think it's hot, so I haven't. <laughs> But now that the temperature is getting better, I was actually okay. just thinking about that. Yeah, I was thinking in my bingo jump outside and just do a couple of stairs or run around for run around the track a little bit, do some mm -hmm. jumping jacks and jump roping and all that. I think it's better now that it's cooler outside. How have you been able to manage um, the eating, um, the nutrition portion during COVID? That's a funny thing. I have been, I think that's why I feel like I haven't, gained as much weight as I could because I still 
am always good with making good choices when it comes to eating. That's something that really has been, like it just has become a part of my life. Like it's just not something, I don't even need to think about doing it. I'm always thinking of, I always choose foods that are good for me or foods that um, I know my body's gonna appreciate. Of course, there are days where I'm like, oh, you know what? I really just want some fries today. <laughs> And so we, you know, but most of the time, 90% of the time, I'm making good choices. I'm eating carbs. I'm, I'm being mindful of my carbs. I'm being mindful of how much sugar I intake. Like, it's just become a lifestyle where I just naturally do it, I guess you could say. Okay. And, like, how? when was the last time, do you still drink soda to be, to, or do you have it from time to time, or do you, like, not even bother with that? Girl, girl I... Over the years, I stopped drinking soda. And one time I went to like a party or something, some gathering, and I was like, oh, wow, soda, orange soda. Orange soda is my thing, my thing. Like when I started, I said, man, let me just have a cup. Let me just have a cup of this thing. Girl, I don't know if I forgot how to swallow. <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't know how, if I forgot how to swallow like you know, soda or like I don't it it like it, it choked. I literally choked when I swallowed it. Just, oh my gosh! It was the kind of technique that I used to have as a kid <laughs> on how to swallow soda. I don't know. Oh it my goodness, that's funny. It literally hurt my throat going down. You don't understand it? I'm like, whoa, right? Whoa. Why? Like I've drunk bubbly stuff before, but this just it just it was a, it was a problem. So uh -huh. like a, it was good, but I just. Like it wasn't my thing anymore. So, I mean, that's me good. Soda, like, hmm? That's good. I mean, I mean, I'm happy that you like. I'm happy that you like are now at a place where your body doesn't even tolerate it anymore. You know what I mean? Because I mean, we know that soda is full of sugar, and that sugar like, is uh, is like uh, yeah, it's like horrible for. I mean, I've I've read an article actually a while ago um, while I was doing some paper for I don't know some nursing class whatever um, yeah. that like. If if kids, especially with children, it was kids and soda, and if especially with kids, if they were to stop drinking soda, those obese these children would lose like just just stopping that would have them lose weight. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And so then you get to see, and of course, those tend to be more so in the predominantly minority communities that those are sold at, like the corner stores and all that stuff. Um, so it's easily yeah. accessible. It's right there by the cashiers. Is all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So then it's easier for you know these kids to just kind of like buy them on the way to school, from school, whatever. And so they're gaining weight and they're drinking that. But if they were just to stop drinking soda, live like just that enough is yeah. enough to have them lose weight. I and it's not bothering. You know what I mean? And that's that's without exercising. That's, that's without like wild. That's so like wild. imagine like when you start adding like all the other stuff like eating uh, proper nutrition exercising like sleeping um habits and like you know all the other things that are uh, would contribute to a whole holistic health type thing situation right. and it's like you will see amazing results you know what mm -hmm. i mean with mm -hmm. the body and soul but yeah. unfortunately we uh we're here. <laughs> we're here. We're in these situations that kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know. That's uh, hopefully that'll change one day. We'll see how that goes. But but I'm happy that you're like you said. You like you said. You're like I can't even drink soda anymore. Mm -hmm. So that, that's yeah. good. That is good. That is good. Like juice, like, like juice. I'm very particular. I rather make my own juice. I, I rather juice oh, my. Own. Yeah, I rather do that than like I don't buy juice in the house like if i do buy juice it's like oh the bottle will literally stay there for like two months like okay. i will i will legit have half a cup like if i just want to have something sweet real quick i'll buy like a hundred percent apple juice and i'll have it in my fridge and i'll just drink like half a cup if i want something sweet just to have like you know to to give my palate a little bit of love you know right, have, like, right. like all right just a little bit and then i'm good you know yeah. exactly but i'm not just there the bottle will literally stay there for a while but i usually I'm a water person. Like water and tea is basically like my life. And juice nice. is really, if I do drink juice, I'm juicing apples. I'm juicing oranges. I'm juicing kiwis. Like that's just what I do. I don't like the bottle stuff. I'm just not a fan of, not a fan. Ah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Are you still vegetarian or do you still like eat lean meats? So I 
started off vegetarian and then I went back to start eating fish. So I'm pescatarian, as you could say now. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I've been that for a little bit. Uh, I just eat, I'm still very particular with the fish that I eat. So it's pretty much just salmon. Um, I'll have haddock once in a while and tuna once in a while, but it's pretty much salmon is pretty much the only fish that I really eat. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you eat it often, or do you eat like a few no. days a week? Or? And even that, like salmon, I don't have it often. I'll have it maybe like twice a month, maybe okay. twice a month, maybe three times a month. Um, okay. It's not something I'm having like a few times a week. Um, I'm doing more um, of like eggs. I'm doing more of like nuts, those type of things that give me enough protein into my diet. But other than that, yeah, I'm not doing too many fish, too much fish at all. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so basically, so I hear you say nuts and all that stuff. So, excuse, <coughs> excuse me. Ooh, that came out of nowhere. Um, so, your um, what did you learn in your research? How did you learn to incorporate those type of things and to give yourself um some amount of protein? Or how did you find out what's good? What's a good balance of protein for you? So I had to Google, of course. I was like, okay, I'm not eating meat. How am I gonna get all these protein in? Like, what what can I get the most protein from? Like, where can I get my protein from? Um, so I had to just research all the veggies that give me protein, all the things like peanut butter, things like eggs that I can eat, um, things like beans. Um, what else? I um because I knew like if I didn't eat meat, I had to find protein some other way. Uh, so I didn't want to just not be eating protein. I also mm -hmm. am big on like protein shakes, like finding um, good protein shakes that are vegan or vegetarian type, I guess, uh, protein, um, because a lot of the proteins come from meat that, which is funny, like people don't know that, but a lot of protein shakes are proteins derived from meat. And mm -hmm. if you're not reading the labels, like you're not reading right. Yeah, you're really like kind of eating meat, you know. So, so right, kind of you're still having. Yeah, yeah, your your in, yeah, your insides are still digesting some some form of meat or protein from meat. So, I've been very careful with like choosing my protein powders. But yeah, I've had to just find. I had to Google and research, research a lot to figure out what foods and how I can get a good amount of protein in. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, I, I, I can definitely relate to that because that's why I kind of like drink the Shakeology from Beachbody because mm -hmm. they're, they have, like a, they have a vegan one and it's like, it's like chia seeds, it's like beans and all that stuff. There's like no like milk or anything of that nature in there mm -hmm. at all. So crazy in if you want to try something different, but, yeah. um, <laughs> anyways, um, <laughs> there was another question I wanted to ask you, um, oh, it, 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 it's, it, it left my mind. Oh, yes. So now that you're, now that you are um, on a different journey, like you've, you've, you've figured out a better way of eating and all that stuff. Do you mm -hmm. feel like you still um, eat? How do you, how do you manage that with your emotions? Cause I know you said that you were a happy eater, right? So mm -hmm. whatever you, so how do you manage that with when you're like constantly happy? Cause I've always have seen you to be a happy person. You know what I mean? Right. Um, right. How do you manage your eating now with your emotions? Um, so funny. So I basically had to, how can I say it? I had to almost like find my happy foods in another category kind of thing. Okay. I still have my happy foods, but they're okay. just good food. Um, okay. So for example, like I love Caesar salads. Like I just love Caesar salads. I love the onions and the, 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 I love romaine lettuce. Like I just love Caesar, Caesar salad and salmon. Like I just love that. Like that's usually my go-to if I'm just content and happy. Um, so that has just become my happy food now. Like if I really want okay. to treat myself, I will go and I will get like a great Caesar salad with like salmon. Um, Parmesan cheese, all of that. Like, you know, not too much on the Parmesan cheese, but Parmesan right. cheese. <laughs> Just that, so I've had to I have to re rethink of what my happy foods are now in a healthier way instead of of the way that I was doing it before because happy foods for me were honey buns and cinnabuns and mm. Cheetos chips and pizza and fries like those are my those are just my happy foods. 
Um, right. And I had, had to like change my mindset for sure. And I think that came really easy to be honest, because once you get into this lifestyle, it's like your brain is just always turned on to that. It's not this thing that you're doing for a week or this thing that you're doing for two weeks or I got to go to Miami in a month. So let me just get on this quick diet. It's not that you're literally on this lifestyle. So your mindset is just always thinking of, okay, I'm happy right now, or I'm sad right now, whatever your emotion you're feeling, but you're still thinking of what can I get that's going to make me happy, but that's not going to completely throw me off. Like this journey that I'm on this lifestyle that I'm, that I'm living, you're always going to choose in the lifestyle that you're going, you know? Um, it's just, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. So what was the biggest struggle for you? What was the biggest thing you had to overcome or whether it mindset mm -hmm. or a habit that you had to deal with in order for you to get to that point? Two, two things. Um, portion control and mm -hmm. plateauing, right? Um, if I could tell you how my plate would look like, I think, <laughs> girl, if I could tell you how my plate used to look like for Thanksgiving, you'd be like, you're not going to take all that food. You're not going to eat all that food. I will, right. eat, I will eat that plate and I will go back and make another one. And I will eat wow. that one too. Like my portion control was non-existent. There was no such thing for me. I ate I, it's almost you would think I had like a bottomless pit in my stomach. Like it was just like yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just insane. And I think that was the biggest struggle for me, changing my mindset on how much food I can have. And I think that was difficult for me because it's like, oh my gosh, what? I'm supposed to have this amount of this, this type of portion? Like I can't have three cups of rice? No. <laughs> so it was no, ma'am. No, ma'am, you will not have three cups of rice. I have three cups of rice. Like, what am I doing? So that, I think, was a big challenge for me, um, wrapping my mind around that, finding my self-control to actually say, yeah, this is what I'm eating. This is my portion. The end. Like, <laughs> there's no, oh, I'm going to go back later. Like, no, this is it. The end. So sometimes it would be so hard where I would just cook just that portion. Because if I cook more, I'm going to go back and get more. So I had to play these kind of games where I'm like, oh, I'm making a cup of rice and I'm going to eat this cup of rice because you know right. what? There's no more rice to eat because I didn't make any more rice. You know what I'm right. saying? So you have to Absolutely. play these type of games. Yeah, yeah. The second thing oh, for me wow. was, um, the second thing for me was plateauing. I, uh -huh. I never knew what that was. There was a point where I was exercising and eating all the good foods and all of that. And I'm like, why am I not? It's been two months. I've been at the same weight. <laughs> In fact, yeah. I was like gaining a pound or two. I was like, what is going on? Like, right. what am I doing wrong? So I stumbled on plateauing and I read about it and I just read about how to get out of it. And I'm like, oh, my body's tired of eating and doing the exact same exercises for the past eight months. It's time yeah. to do something else. So I, um, I had to, I felt very discouraged at a time when I didn't know what was going on. But when I figured it out, I was like, oh, okay, I got this. And I started, you know, changing my routines or whatever. And my, the weight started continuing to fall off, but that can be very discouraging to someone who maybe isn't aware about that, about yeah. plateauing. They're like, oh, I'm, you know, forget this. I'm going to quit. I'm not losing weight anymore. Like, this doesn't work. You know, you just all, all of a sudden you're like, it doesn't work, but it's not that it doesn't work. It's just that you got to change things up. You got to change right. your, you know, eat something different. You know, it's just, it's, it's really a game. I, it's how I see it in my mind. It's just, so, like a, a little puzzle you have to kind of figure out, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It is. It's definitely something you have to figure out. It's like not something you're going to wake up and know all of a sudden is mm -hmm. through trial and error. And it's going to look different for you. What's, what's going to work for you might not work for me, but mm -hmm. might work for that That's person. True. So it's like yeah. you almost have to be have, have always conducting an experiment on yourself to see what works best yeah. and what yeah. doesn't, you know what I mean? So um, I appreciate your desire to like really want to know. And so you were like, into, you know, like you were doing all the research and all the things. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. Um, so you said your heaviest was 265. So what are you currently or where where are you currently? If you don't mind sharing, if you don't mind, if you don't want to share this time, but if, <laughs> but if you, are you, um, and if you don't want to share the number, you can say, you know, are you where you want to be yet? I would say this. 
Okay. I'm, I'm definitely under 200 pounds for sure. Okay. Okay. Um, but I am 10 pounds from what my ideal weight loss goal would be, like perfect number, if you want to call it that, would be. Okay. I could get down with that. That's awesome. That's yeah. still something worth celebrating, Livy. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so mm -hmm. what would you say to someone who is struggling with portion control right now? Like they mm -hmm. have that similar relationship with food, like as you do, but they're struggling with portion control and they just can't seem to get it down. What would you say to that person? I would say, I would say make it where it's just impossible for you to cheat, if you want to call it that. Like, like I said before, if you know how you are and that, okay, you know what? Um, I'm going to, if I buy this big bag of chips, I'm going to eat the whole thing tonight. Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend is buy a smaller version of that bag of chips so that you know you're not going to eat. You know, it, you just have to, make those type of decisions. And I think that's where it starts. I think self-control starts from first being able to make good decisions. Um, and then you just start noticing that, okay, I got this. You know, you just feel happy that, you know what? I ate one, one small bag of chips. I didn't eat this whole big one because I didn't buy the big one. I can't even eat it because I didn't know. <laughs> you know, and I think that's where, that's where it starts for me. I, I was, you know, it's it can get a little, you know, frustrating who wants to cook food every single day but if i know myself that if i make a casserole if i made a pot um i got you though i got you i totally do but for our audience go ahead audience, sorry, right if i make a pot of spaghetti and i know that i'm going to eat half of that pot of spaghetti then you know what i'm not gonna make that much i'm just gonna make the right amount of portion for me to have because you know what after i finish eating i'm not gonna go back and cook some more spaghetti just to have some more i'm just not gonna do it so it's just yeah. about yeah it's just it's really about like for example some people will buy pizza they'll buy like a box of pizza and they will sit there and eat this whole box of pizza when they were already full after two slices you know but it's that self-control of not being able to stop you know what? You need to buy two sizes of pizza. You need to not buy this box of pizza. So it's those type of decisions and choices you just have to make, and that's where it starts. Because self control, um, portion control is hard. It's it's hard because you just want to keep right. eating. The food is good. You want to keep eating it. You know. So I think it's just making those decisions and um, consciously making those decisions. Yeah. That's awesome. That's all. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, now, what, listening to you speak about self-control, one thing I wanted to ask you, did you find yourself eating while you were watching TV or being distracted? And do you think that that contributed to your portion, um, your inability to kind of like really control it per se? Oh, gosh. So I love eating, watching something. Like that's just my, my comfort space. Like I'm watching a good movie or whatever. And I realized that, I don't know what it is. I need to research more about it. But I'm sure there's research, research on it. I realized that when I eat in front of the TV, <laughs> I don't know if, okay, I ate the plate. I ate, like I'm, I ate the whole thing of the plate. I ate whatever on my, on my, on my plate, but I still felt like I didn't eat everything on my plate. For some reason, I felt like, and I think it's because I wasn't concentrating on what I was eating. I was so looking at the TV and just whatever. I wasn't even noticing that, oh yeah, I ate all of this and I'm full. I'm like, oh my gosh, did I really? I, I feel like I'm still hungry. Like, it's so weird. And I would just go back to the kitchen and make myself like, a, you know, put a little bit more on my plate. But it's like, I know I ate, I put out the portion that I need to eat and I yep. know I'm full, but because I was watching TV or distracted, I didn't really even notice that I wasn't even paying attention to what I ate. So that's, that is something to, that's, a, that's, that's, that's such a thing to, <laughs> no, I'm telling you, that will, no, it really, is. that will really set you back and you won't even yeah. realize that, that, that it's setting you back. That's a huge mm -hmm. thing. It is a thing, and and it's it's um it's it's called mindfulness. When if you eat mindfully, then you will be fuller and more satisfied a lot sooner than you would be yeah. 
if you didn't. Um, and being mindful just means sitting down and being intentional about what you're eating. You're not eating distracted. You don't have a screen in front of you. You're not like, you know what I mean? You're not typing on the computer. You're not scrolling right, through social right. media. You're just focusing on the meal. You're savoring the, the, the flavor. You're savoring the textures. Uh -huh. And you're savoring what you, you, you made. You're enjoying what's in front of you. And there is research. There's plenty of research. I know about that. I know there that. Is. That, that you know it, when people eat mindfully that we get we are fuller sooner like 80 percent we we achieve that satisfaction a lot sooner than we would have if we were to just be like throwing things in our faces um yeah. and so and and that's why some i mean okay. because because we're so oh are you there yes you are okay, okay yeah um yeah, because uh, because eat eating so what are you saying? Because you froze for a second. Oh, okay. Because I was saying sometimes when we eat so fast, we don't even pay, we don't even real pay attention, or we don't even remember where we eat afterwards. Like you can eat mm -hmm. like a, whole, and then you're like, I don't even remember what I ate. I don't remember what it tastes like because you, nope. you ate so fast, you weren't intentional about that. So there's there's a whole thing about that. Absolutely, there's research about that. Um, and there was even they even conducted it on people who did um. People who 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 learn how to eat mindfully after uh, bariatric surgery, mm, yeah. So and they were like, man, if I knew this prior to, I wouldn't have con I wouldn't have under you know went and had the surgery done. Yeah. They realized that that is such a powerful tool to sit down and just eat. If we just eat slower and mm -hmm. more intentional, and it, it's just like a whole body experience, right? So then you achieve that satisfaction much sooner and just yeah. chewing alone you know what i mean it allows you to really appreciate and and break down the food and so you're really getting your body's really getting all that it needs so yeah. that girl there's a whole i can get into it but i'm gonna stop right here because mm -hmm. <laughs> um but there's like I a know. whole thing about it and so yeah. um but I'm, I'm hoping that whoever's listening um whether it's on the replay or yeah well it is on the replay because it's recorded that mm -hmm. um you really like if you are struggling with this that you really consider eating mindfully and doing research about that and to see how you can um be better about slowing down your eating um so that you can decrease your portion control so yeah. it, it's and it all starts in the mind right because as you say you have to like trick yourself into saying okay these decisions i'm not gonna buy the bigger bag i'm gonna buy a smaller bag or i'm not gonna mm -hmm. cook a whole pot of rice i'm gonna cook something <laughs> smaller you know what i mean so these yeah. things you gotta do um on a daily basis in order for you to get to where you need to go so that's really awesome information Liv. i really do appreciate that so um w let's see where are you where are you hanging out like in terms of social media do you want anyone to follow you on any pages or anything that you're up to that you want people to yeah, see yeah, yeah. i do have my whole health page on instagram um because i started um i realized that though I was on this journey and I was just eating healthy and I realized that people were asking me questions about, oh my gosh, Livia, you're losing weight. Like, what are you doing? What are you eating? What are you? So I was like, no, let me just start this Instagram page and kind of post a few of the recipes that I've made, a few of the shakes that I, you know, a couple of workouts that I've done. Um, I realized that I realized that I like to bake and I like to like cook you know over time i realized that i'm like oh, okay you know i actually enjoy cooking now because <laughs> I, you know, i'm able to tweak you know foods yes. that weren't good for or not that good for me and i'm able to tweak and kind of use alternative things to cook with you know like instead of using all purpose flour i'm trying to use almond flour coconut flour like it's just really cool to be able to experiment and actually be able to not feel guilty i guess about this brownie cake that i just ate you know i feel, <laughs> I feel a little less, a less guilty about it because the one that i made is not full of um carbs and sugar it's just you know it still tastes good but it's not like i'm not regretting it the next day yes, you know? absolutely so I, I do have a instagram page it's live in health and that's l-y-v-n-i-n -N health h-e-a-l-t-h okay Honestly. awesome yeah. On Instagram. Okay. So you guys, if you are wanting to check live out, please mm -hmm. visit her at, uh, at live in health, right? Live in health. Yes, um, and I will put, and I will put that information on the notes for this, um, interview. So, um, this concludes our interview. Um, I don't have anything else to say, Liv. I don't know if you have anything else to add. Uh, no, I'm good. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. This was wonderful conversation. I really do enjoy it. Cause I, and I hope that anyone else who, um, 
is struggling with 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 their relationship with food can really get an ch- opportunity to listen to this and to listen to your journey and yeah. understand that there is hope you know um that you, you know once you keep trying 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 and pushing yourself and learning and there will be highs there will be lows there'll be trials and errors but you know at the end you it's possible that yeah. you can have that um a more positive relationship with food so mm-hmm. thank you so much again Liv. i do appreciate you and guys thank you for watching um add your comments below i'd love to hear if your feedback so uh, let us know how you feel any questions you can post it and Liv can maybe check later on and then answer any questions that she has for you all right yeah, so thanks again bye bye thanks see ya mm-hmm.